Looking for a stock that's performing at a high level and actually up in 2022? Want to collect one of the safest dividends in the market? Would you like to invest in a blue chip business at a discount? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before we get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. It helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a leading property casualty insurer. Insurance is a fantastic business model. You make money by providing insurance and underwriting risk. Then you make money yet again from the capital that builds up due to the time delay between collecting premiums and paying out on claims. This one-two punch is formidable and it leads to a lot of big profits and big dividends. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Travelers Companies, Inc., which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Travelers Companies, Inc., stock ticker TRV, is a holding company that through its subsidiaries provides commercial and personal property and casualty insurance products to individuals, businesses, government units, and associations. Founded in 1853, Travelers is now a $40 billion by market cap insurance behemoth that employs over 30,000 people. It's the only PNC insurance company in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is truly a blue chip company. Net written premiums for fiscal year 2021 break down across the following segments. Business insurance, 50%, personal Personal insurance 39% and bond and specialty insurance 11%. As I've stated many times before, I love the insurance business model. Whereas most business models make money by selling their products and or services, the insurance business model makes money on top of this. That's due to the float. The float is the capital that builds up as a natural course of doing business. An insurance company charges premiums up front and they later pay out claims against those premiums. But the lag between these two events often leads to an insurance company sitting on a lot of cash, which is a low cost and low risk source of capital that earns returns all by itself. It's somewhat similar to a bank deposit scheme. For a perspective on that, Travelers manages an investment portfolio with a carrying value of $84 billion as of the end of 2020. The investment portfolio is more than twice as large as the company's entire market cap, and this kind of capital can produce a lot of income, even in a low rate world. For further perspective on just how powerful the float is, Travelers had net income of nearly $3.7 billion last fiscal year, the investment portfolio generated most of that, with net investment income coming in at $2.5 billion for the fiscal year. The float is what makes the insurance business model so lucrative. Whereas a lot of people might assume an insurance company makes most of its money by just selling insurance, they actually tend to make most of their money by properly utilizing the float. Warren Buffett recognized the power of the float decades ago, heavily investing in, and later buying out, insurance company Geico. Geico now forms a major pillar of his conglomerate, Berkshire Hathaway Inc. Buffett took the inherent power of the float and supercharged it by virtue of his investing prowess, building a $300 plus billion common stock portfolio in the process and becoming, arguably, the world's all-time greatest investor. If an insurance company can combine effective underwriting with a large float, they become a formidable company. And that is exactly what Travelers has done. This positions them to continue growing their revenue, profit, and dividend for decades to come. The company has already increased its dividend for 17 consecutive years. Their 10-year dividend growth rate of 8.2% is very solid and easily beats inflation. And that growth is paired with a market-beating yield of 2.2%. This yield is basically right in line with its own five-year average. I suspect there's plenty more growth in store for the dividend as the payout ratio is only 24.7%. Looking at business growth, Travelers increased its revenue 
from $25.7 billion in fiscal year 2012 to $34.8 billion in fiscal year 2021. That's a compound annual growth rate of 3.4%. It's been a tough and competitive underwriting environment, but this is a solid result. Meanwhile, earnings per share advanced from $6.30 to $13.94 over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 9.2%. That earnings per share growth lines up pretty nicely with the 10-year dividend growth rate. A major factor in the excess bottom line growth has been buybacks. Travelers reduced its outstanding share count by approximately 36% over the last decade, and that is one of the more substantial buyback programs I know of. Looking forward, CFRA is projecting that Travelers will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 10% over the next three years. That would be pretty much in line with what the last decade has resulted in for the company. One highlight that stands out from CFRA on this is them pointing out that Travelers has, and I quote, a diversified mix of business and sound capital management and underwriting practices, unquote. And in insurance, that's pretty much the name of the game. If you can underwrite with prudence and then manage capital intelligently, you're going to do really, really well as an insurer. Speaking on the underwriting, Travelers had an underlying combined ratio of 90.3% for fiscal year 2021. I think it's important to point out that Travelers has put up some great numbers in a low rate environment, but interest rates are set to rise this year. That would have a positive impact on the investment portfolio, which helps the company as a whole. If travelers can compound the bottom line at nearly 10% annually when rates are historically low, they stand to do a lot better when rates are higher. Overall, I see CFRA's earnings per share growth forecast as appropriate, and that would allow travelers to grow the dividend at a similar or higher rate, especially after factoring in the low payout ratio. With a 2% plus starting yield, that kind of dividend growth is more than enough to make it a captivating long-term investment idea. Moving over to the balance sheet, the company maintains a rock solid financial position. Since insurance companies are in the business of managing risk, they tend to have conservative balance sheets. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 0.3, while the interest coverage ratio is over 15. Their credit ratings are well into investment grade territory. The company's senior debt has the following ratings. A, Standard & Poor's, A2 Moody's, A Fitch. Profitability is strong. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 8.5% and annual return on equity of 10.4%. This blue chip company is a well-run operation and they benefit from durable competitive advantages that include economies of scale and the float. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Competition is especially fierce in insurance. There is natural disaster risk. Natural disasters are both very expensive and very difficult to predict. The company's investment portfolio is largely allocated to fixed income instruments. The low rate environment limits returns on these investments and municipal bond holdings face risk from local government finances. Travelers must remain disciplined with underwriting. There's always a risk that future claims could reveal that prior underwriting practices weren't appropriate. I think it's important to consider these risks, but Travelers still strikes me as a great insurance business that can make for an excellent long-term investment. This is a rare stock that's actually up in 22, up by 8%, but the valuation still looks rather appealing right now. The price earnings ratio is 12.0. That's significantly lower than the broader market's earnings multiple. It's also well off the stock's own five-year average PE ratio of 14.1. There's also a disconnect in the price to cash flow ratio. At 5.8, that's much lower than its own five-year average of 7.5. Meantime, the price to book ratio of 1.4 is right in line with its five-year average, and the yield, as noted earlier, is basically right in line with its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 8%. This dividend growth rate is as high as I go, and maybe that looks aggressive at first glance, but it is below the company's demonstrated dividend growth and earnings per share growth over the last decade. It's also below the near-term forecast for earnings per share growth, and the payout ratio is very low. The last few dividend increases have admittedly been small, but Travelers has the ability to easily grow the dividend at a high single-digit rate based on operating results. With rates set to rise, their ability to do that only improves. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $190.08. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates Travelers as a three-star stock with a fair value estimate of $170. CFRA rates Travelers as a three-star whole with a 12-month target price of $175. I came out on the high end, but we all agree that the stock is worth more than it's currently being priced at. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $178.36, which would indicate the stock is possibly 6% 
undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Travelers Companies Inc. is a great insurance company operating at a high level. It's one of the few stocks that is actually up in 2022, even while the S&P 500 recently hit correction territory. With a market beating yield, more than 15 consecutive years of dividend increases, inflation beating dividend growth, a very low payout ratio, and the potential that shares are 6% undervalued, long-term dividend growth investors should consider picking up this blue chip sock here. And now for a special news announcement. Comcast Corporation, stock ticker CMCSA, just got an upgrade from RBC Capital. Analyst Stephen Cahall raised his rating to outperform with a target price of $60. He states that the 19% sell-off since early August is overdone. I just covered Comcast in a full analysis and valuation video showing an estimate of intrinsic value that is pretty close to Cahall's target price. If you haven't already taken a look at this name, RBC Capital's upgrade ought to be a sign that you should consider changing that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.